Today we have some Home Alone horror stories, not like the ones in the movies. Before we begin, if you think you might fall asleep, please introduce yourself in the comments, and while you're there, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always interested in knowing what country everyone is from, so let us know in the comments and share what time it is where you are. Thank you once more for joining me. Get cozy, turn the lights off, grab a glass of water, and make sure you've locked your door. Don't forget to say hello in the comments. It's time to close your eyes. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbors close enough not to feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up to my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd, as I had never smelled that before around that house. I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I had just got off a shift with a few hours of overtime, so I felt pretty tired. Even though it wasn't even 7 yet, I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up some time later, sure that I had heard a noise inside my house. I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him a spare key so he could stop by even if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though, and I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text. The bright light from my phone's screen blinded me. These were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark, and this particular phone was so bright, I could use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes, I could make out that it was 9-something, but I couldn't tell if I had an unread text or not. I set my phone aside and called out my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footsteps as someone started running through the bottom floor of my house. I leapt out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I had opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of the hallway, the one I was in and a spare, and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway past my door and into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. I had just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside of the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop. When they didn't see me in that room, they ran back to the hallway and into the other room which just had boxes stacked in a corner, some weights, and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided that if someone were hiding, it would be in the bedroom because they charged back into my room and turned on the light. A moment later the closet door was ripped open. I was crouched in my attic just a foot or so away from the access, so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. From my vantage point all I could see was from about their knee down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and work boots. After a few seconds of looking in the closet, they stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room followed by a scream of frustration and anger. That scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. It reminded me far too much of my stepfather who would scream in a similar way when he lost his temper. He would eventually be placed in a mental hospital for several mental disorders that resulted in erratic and violent tendencies. The man in my house ran back down the stairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I had left my cell phone when I ran for the closet and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. 
I started counting slowly. When I reached 1,000, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed over. I assumed in an attempt to find me. That was the loud noise I had heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess, but I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the sofa had been flipped. All the books, pictures, and knickknacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened and all the boxed and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell though, the only thing missing was a single knife out of the wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked the house from top to bottom. They found that the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line along with some foil and an empty pen which the police said people often use to smoke meth so they think he had been watching my house for a while. I realized that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with family or friends that night and get the door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved a shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence line where the police found the cigarette butts and foil, but I didn't see anything. The next day I called to have the door fixed and get motion lights installed at the back and sides of my house. I ran a phone cable up into the attic and added a landline. I never wanted to be stuck up there without a phone again. Nothing else happened at that house though. I lived there another three years without incident. One more precaution I took was practicing getting out of my bed, going to my closet and climbing into the attic as quickly and quietly as possible. I even practiced doing that at my new place, except now I go to a crawl space at the back of the closet instead of the attic. I try not to think about what would have happened if I had been a bit slower getting to the attic or if he hadn't gone into the bathroom at the end of the hall first. My roommate was out of the house for the week, so I had the place to myself. It was spring break, so my college classes were out. I had no plans and really nothing I needed to do. On Monday, I was basically trapped inside due to a huge storm blowing through our city. This was common around this time of year, but it still always seemed worse every time. The trees always looked like they were going to blow away, and the house would shake and creak non-stop. Knowing I wouldn't be able to sleep, I decided to just stay up. I turned on the Xbox and started up one of my video games and played for well over an hour, probably until 11 o'clock when the doorbell rang. I paused the game and got up, but then I remembered the whole storm situation. Who would be outside right now? I went over to the front door and looked through the peephole, but nothing. I opened the door. The wind and water hit me right away, but when I looked around, I didn't see anyone. I closed the door and thought maybe the wind had somehow rung the doorbell. I don't know, it sounds dumb now, but what was I supposed to think? I went back to my game, but only a couple minutes later, I heard a huge crash in the backyard, stuff tumbling over and breaking. I immediately knew it was our patio furniture and ran over to the back door. Everything was scattered around the yard, blowing around in the wind. I quickly put on my shoes and went outside, pushing each piece of furniture up against the back of the house. The wind was so heavy it would even hurt sometimes when the water would hit my face. I was rushing going as fast as I could until I saw someone. They were standing at the edge of the backyard, watching me. I looked back at them for a moment but then grabbed the last piece of furniture and ran inside to escape the rain. I looked at the back door as I dried off, but the person was gone. Between that and the doorbell ringing, I was a little bit nervous. I sat in the living room this time, just scrolling on my phone because I was tired of being interrupted. After a while, I struggled to keep my eyes open. I got a blanket and laid down on the couch. I didn't feel like going upstairs, and the storm was much louder up there. 
It took a while, but eventually, I drifted off and fell asleep. A few hours later, still well into the night, I woke up from a sudden burst of heavy wind outside, shaking the house. I pulled the blanket to the side and sat up, moving my feet to the floor as I prepared to go check if the furniture outside was still there. But just when my feet touched the floor, they were soaked. It woke me up immediately. I looked down and saw a puddle on the ground right next to the couch. Then I saw another, leading in a line across the floor. Inside the puddles were faint muddy shoe prints. I stood up and ran to the corner of the room, heart beating rapidly in my chest. After a minute of hearing nothing but the wind outside, I slowly followed the shoe prints. They led all throughout the house, upstairs and down, but I could clearly tell that they entered through the back door, which I had stupidly forgotten to lock in the rush of getting out of the rain. I locked it and pulled my phone out to call 911, but then the thought crept into my mind, what if they're still inside? I stayed quiet and moved into the corner of the house where I felt the most hidden. I waited in silence for them to arrive. When they did, they took a look around, seeing everything I saw, but nothing more. They told me it seems like a personal attack because nothing was missing and they were clearly focused on my house in particular. However, they walked right up to me while I was sleeping and seemingly did nothing but watch me, which is super creepy but doesn't make much sense. If they wanted to do something to me, they would have done it at that moment. After some thought, this had led me to believe that whoever it was had actually come from my roommates. They saw me, then looked around the whole house, and then left. Doing absolutely nothing. So if this was a personal attack and my roommate was there, I think things may have gone a lot worse than they had. I lived with my older brother for about four years after I finished school. We shared rent on an apartment together since neither of us could afford anything on our own. But during the fourth year, my brother started making better money and he planned to move out once the lease came to an end. I wasn't making a lot, so I knew I couldn't afford to pay for the apartment alone. I looked around online for a roommate for a few months but decided to move out as well and find a cheaper place. I searched until the last month of our lease at the apartment. My brother had basically moved everything out already, and there was a lot of pressure on me to find somewhere quick. But with my extremely low budget, it was hard. Eventually, I stumbled across a listing posted by a homeowner renting out a room in their house. The man's name was Evan. I sent him a text to let him know I was interested, then kept searching. He responded within a few minutes. We scheduled a time to call later in the day, and when we did, he explained all the details. He said he lived alone in the house and was renting out his spare bedroom, but I'd be able to use all the other rooms in the house. It sounded great to me, so I agreed to it. A couple of weeks later, I packed everything in a U-Haul and drove down to the house. Between this time, we'd been texting and calling, and he sent me a bunch of pictures, but I hadn't had the chance to view it in person yet. I got there around noon, parking in the driveway. The house was definitely small, but it looked nice from the outside. Evan was standing in the garage, waving me over. He gave me a quick tour, then helped me unload all of my stuff into my room. Evan seemed like a regular man in his mid-thirties, which was almost ten years older than myself, but I didn't really mind. He didn't hold conversations very well, and was somewhat shy. Anyway, we finished moving everything inside, and I dropped the U-Haul off. I Ubered back to the house, and by then, it was almost 8 p.m., and I was really tired. Evan was on the couch, watching TV, so I told him I was going to bed early, and I went to my room. All in all, it seemed like a decent place, and I was happy with it. I unpacked some more, then set up my bed, and by 9 o'clock, I was finally ready to sleep. I walked over to my door to lock it and turn off the lights. But as I reached my hand out, I saw the knob on the door was empty. As in, there was no lock on it. Confused, I opened the door. The lock was on the outside of the door. 
I stepped into the living room and asked Evan why the bedroom door locked from the outside. He looked confused and said he never noticed that but he would switch it around tomorrow. I shrugged and said okay, then went back to my room. I was tired and not too worried about it, but it was definitely an odd find. I got in bed and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I heard someone moving around in the kitchen, which I assumed was just Evan getting water or something. I closed my eyes again. A minute later, I heard him walking back down the hallway, but as he was passing my room, he stopped. I opened my eyes and looked at the door. He was standing out there quietly for maybe 15 seconds before I heard a click. He locked my door. My stomach dropped and I felt my face go cold as Evan walked down to his room. As soon as I heard his bedroom door shut, I got up quietly and went over to the door. I tried the handle and it wouldn't budge. I stood in shock for a few seconds, coming to the reality that this man I just met has now locked me in a room. My fear started to turn into anger and I called out for Evan, telling him to open the door. It only took a second before I heard Evan run out of his room and over to my door. I heard him place his hand on the door, but he paused for a few seconds before he unlocked it. I swung the door open right away. What the hell was that? I confronted him. Evan was stumbling over his words, saying he just wanted to make sure he was safe because he didn't know me well enough. I understood that concern, but locking someone in a room was not a smart way to go about it. I told him that I was going to pack up and leave in the morning. I stayed up all night on the couch in the living room, waiting for the U-Haul store to open at 9 o'clock. I looked into the hallway, seeing Evan's bedroom door was still closed, hopefully meaning he was still asleep. Then I drove straight there and drove the U-Haul back to the house. When I went inside, Evan's bedroom door was open. Evan? I called out. I walked over to his room and peeked my head inside. His room was empty. I moved my eyes around the room in disbelief, seeing as things were only getting weirder. I backed out and got straight to moving my stuff. I powered through two hours of moving boxes and taking apart my bed. I only had two boxes left and I ran inside and picked up another, then rushed to the front door until Evan appeared in the doorway. Move. I said. He stared at me emotionless. After a few seconds, he stepped aside. I hurried past him and shoved the box in the U-Haul. The last box was half full of random food I kept from my old pantry at the apartment. I decided to just leave it. Evan was freaking me out and I wanted to get away from him as soon as possible. I started closing the back of the U-Haul before Evan interrupted. You forgot this. He held out the last box. Oh yeah, thanks. I grabbed it from him and climbed back into the truck. I felt him watching me as I stacked the box, and when I turned, he had his hand on the door. He started pulling it down, trying to close me in. I was able to stop him before the door was even halfway down. I shoved him to the ground, but he got up and ran. Not into the house, but off into the trees, away from the property. I didn't know what to think, but I didn't care. I quickly shut the back door and drove away. My brother was nice enough to let me stay with him until I found a new place. I don't know what happened at that house or what would have happened, but there was definitely something very wrong going on. This all happened roughly around four years ago, but the experience has haunted me almost every single day since it happened. I'll start off by saying that at the time I was pretty young. I was single and very keen to have my first experience with someone. I spent a while looking through dating apps, talking to a few people, until I finally came across a guy who seemed interesting. We had a lot of things in common, so I thought it would be a good idea to meet up with him since we had been talking for almost a month. Now even though I was only young, I wasn't naive or stupid. I was, and still am, a very cautious and paranoid person. But for some reason, I made what possibly could have been one of the worst decisions of my life. 
I invited him to come spend the night at my place. My parents were away for the weekend and I had the place to myself, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity for him to come over. He lived around three hours away from my place, yet he was eager and almost desperate to visit. So he set off as soon as he finished work, which was around 11 a.m. The whole time he was driving to my place, I had the sickening sense of impending doom. Almost as if something was going to go very, very wrong. I almost texted him multiple times to tell him that I wasn't interested anymore, but I hesitated as he was only 10 minutes away by this point. I jumped up as I heard his car pull up, and I expected to be greeted by a smile once I opened the door. But he pushed his way through, and continued to stare at me blankly, all whilst my two French bulldogs snarled and growled at him, which they never do to anyone. Things instantly seemed extremely odd. He followed me quickly to my bedroom and didn't waste any time in aggressively undressing me. I hesitantly went along with it, as this was my first experience with someone. He was almost six years older than me, so I was pretty tense. Fast forward to a couple of hours later, he suddenly asked me if he could sleep in my room, which confused me as it was only 5 p.m. But I told him it was fine, and I would continue to watch movies by myself downstairs. After about an hour, I heard what sounded like furniture being moved around, and the sound of him talking. So I made my way upstairs and opened my door, only to find him crouching in the middle of my room and breathing extremely heavily. When I asked if he was okay, he motioned for me to get on the bed. He sat me on his lap and proceeded to place a blindfold over my eyes, putting his hands around my neck lightly. I was already feeling extremely uncomfortable, and it worsened as he tightened his grip around my throat. He asked, Does anyone know I'm here? Do your friends know who I am and what I look like? I instantly answered, saying that my sister and friends knew he was here. This was a complete lie because I don't have a sister, and my friends were unaware, but something inside of me forced me to say it. After minutes of awkward silence, he stood up to gather his things. I noticed that in his backpack, he had tape, rope, and handcuffs. At first, it didn't concern me as I knew he was into that stuff, but looking back, I think it was intended for something much worse. All of a sudden he said, I think I'm going to head home. I have a long drive, and I'm rather tired. I didn't hesitate to let him out of my door because I was already extremely uncomfortable. As he left, he failed to even look at me or say goodbye. He raced off down the street as soon as he got into his car. I ran back to my room to see if he had left anything because he'd left in a hurry. I found a note on my desk with the words, being nice is what saved you. At the time, I had no idea what the note meant. Now that I think about it, I seriously think that he had very ill intentions toward me. I'm still angry at myself for letting a stranger into my home, which was obviously a big mistake. I immediately blocked him on all of my social media. I am just so lucky that I made it out alive. All I know is that he is now somewhere back in America. I don't really know why he was living in the UK at the time that I met him, but all I can say now is that I am glad that he is many miles away from me. About 10 years ago, I lived on my own and didn't have much company. I was quite depressed at the time after losing my girlfriend to a drunk driver. I was enjoying a beer and watching the sunset on the back porch when I saw a large, scruffy man emerging from the tree line. My heart skipped a beat as he stumbled towards my house in a menacing way. Living alone, I often used my backyard for target practice. And at that moment, I was immensely grateful for it. Instinctively, I rushed to bolt all the doors while frantically dialing the police. What I didn't know was that this intruder had broken in the day before through a basement window and had spent the night squatting there. He had left the basement door unlocked and at this point he made his way inside the house and was making his way up the stairs towards me. I gripped my rifle, aiming at the approaching man as he descended the hallway. I shouted at him, ordering him to stop and get on the ground, but he just kept walking towards me. I fired the first round, loaded with rock salt, 
but he showed no reaction. I quickly followed with a rubber bullet to the chest. Yet the drugged up guy who was clearly out of his mind continued advancing. This guy was huge, at least twice my size, and I realized that whatever drugs he had in his body were going to push him through any pain that a rubber bullet would inflict. He was backing me into a corner. I desperately begged him to stop and warned him what would happen, but he just moaned at me like a zombie and shouted, Shoot! Do it! Then he lunged towards me. I took my third shot. I can't recall whether it was buckshot or a slug, but it left a gaping hole in his chest. It barely even slowed him down. He kept coming, and in a frenzied struggle, he wrestled me to the ground. He was moaning and coughing up blood. Suddenly, he grabbed my face with both of his massive hands and started squeezing my head. It was utterly terrifying. I could feel him trying to burst my skull open like a balloon. I don't know how long it actually lasted, but it felt like forever. Eventually, the injury finally caught up with him and he died on top of me. I was laying with him crushing me for a few minutes. My energy was completely drained and I could barely breathe with his weight on top of me. His body was pushing my rifle into my chest and it was causing me serious pain when I tilted his body to the side. I was completely drenched in his blood and I can still remember the overwhelming smell. I'd completely forgotten that I was still on the phone with the operator who had heard our entire exchange which more or less amounted to me pleading, stop or I'll shoot and the man menacingly taunting. The police arrived soon after and the incident made it to the local papers. There was a criminal investigation but eventually I was cleared of any wrongdoing. It turned out that the intruder was wanted for murder of an elderly couple in Baltimore and had somehow made his way 50 miles up the road into our rural area. This all happened just recently, in summer this year. I'd been living with my parents until I had a good enough job to move out. About nine months ago I was finally ready to leave the nest. The place I found wasn't the nicest neighborhood, but it wasn't too bad. Some of my neighbors actually came over to welcome me and gave me some food. There was one neighbor though, the guy who lived to the right of me, who wasn't exactly welcoming, but immediately comfortable with me like we'd known each other for a long time. He'd see me leaving for work in the morning and run out of his house to tell me random stories, like how the last neighbor used to always turn the bathroom light on at 3 a.m. and leave it on all night. Or that they would sunbathe in the garden for five hours sometimes. It was all very random boring facts, and I'd barely get a chance to react to his stories before he was asking me intrusive questions. Like, why did you leave for 83 minutes last night? It's worth knowing that his voice was a bit odd. He spoke with a very particular inflection every time he'd say something. Like an enthusiastic nerd, if that makes sense. Sometimes it made his statements sound like accusations, and sometimes it made them sound like questions, but my response to his comments were never really met with conversation. I would kind of laugh it off and just give him a short answer, like, I had to grab some groceries for tomorrow. But he'd be really quick to interrupt and remind me that the last neighbor never took 83 minutes to grab groceries. And he'd say it with an almost accusatory tone. Like what I was saying was ridiculous. I assumed he was just a bit odd and didn't call him out on his intrusive questions too much. This continued for weeks. He either ran out to come and question me about my day-to-day -day activity or he'd come knocking at random hours to tell me facts about my life. He would tell me that he noticed that I left at 8.33 this morning instead of the usual 8.26. I had different ways of reacting to this, sometimes thanking him for letting me know, 
sometimes being rather dismissive, but always friendly. He was never interested in any other kind of conversation. He'd tell me his observations and then leave. The months went by, and his behavior continued. Almost every day he'd stop me in the morning or come knocking to tell me something about his observations. He seemed harmless so I just let him do his thing. One evening while I was going for drinks across the road, I asked my neighbor if she ever had any issues with him. She paused almost immediately and looked at me with a serious expression. What happened? She seemed really worried when she asked me. I explained to her that he would approach me constantly to tell me that he'd seen me turning on specific lights in the house at night or that he'd point out changes in my usual routine. Nothing terrifying but still creepy. At this point she turned the music off and put her glass down. You need to be careful around him. She seemed disturbed, like I triggered a repressed memory. The people who lived in that house before you were so sweet. I can't prove it, but I know that they're gone because of him. Gone? What did she mean gone? I pushed her to tell me more, but she apologized and turned the music back on and changed the subject, ending the conversation. She did stop at one point to just make sure I locked my doors and not to invite him in at any point. That night as I made my way back home, I watched his house closely as I crossed the road. It was noticeably dark, I never really paid it much attention, but I don't think I ever saw his lights after dark. Whereas every other house on the street had at least a few lights in different rooms. I got to my door and paused. I looked towards his house one more time. I saw exactly what I was hoping not to. A glimpse of light. He was peeking at me. How long had he been watching the neighbor's house to know that I was over there? Was this all he did? Watch me? I went inside and remembered what my neighbors said. How often did I not even think about locking the door? Honestly, I think most nights I wouldn't even check. I clicked the lock and made my way to the back door. I took the key from the side and made sure it was locked. I put the key back in its usual place and made my way upstairs. As I dressed down into my underwear and made my way under my covers, I reached over it and turned off the lamp. It had been a long night so I started to drift off quite fast. Did I hear that? Was that knocking? I sat on the side of my bed and waited, anticipating more knocks. About a minute passed and I didn't hear any more knocking. So I assumed I just dreamt it as I was half asleep. I lay back onto my bed and closed my eyes once again. No. I definitely heard something. I was in a weird state of being half asleep and a little bit tipsy, so I threw the light on and made my way to the window. I couldn't see anything or anyone outside. The sound of me opening my window was loud enough for any visitor to hear. I called out into the darkness, asking if anyone was there. At this point, any normal person would step into view and show themselves, but nobody reacted. Nothing. I know that someone was knocking. I threw on my dressing gown and made my way downstairs. I went straight to the front door. It had shaded glass that let me see partially through it. There was clearly a figure standing in front of the door. I was freaking out, but I was also angry. I didn't even consider the danger. I started fumbling with the lock and threw the door open. You left your house for 157 minutes. What the hell? I snapped. This was the latest he ever visited. Everything about his behavior had really annoyed me. The fact that I called out of the window and he didn't respond and instead stood with his nose practically touching my front door. Why did you feel the need to tell me that? At this late in the night. I was falling asleep. You've been out very late. I know that. I'm an adult. I'm allowed to go out late. I realized I was reacting to his accusatory tone. Is that all? You wanted to tell me I'd been out late? He started to just walk away, back to his house. 
I yelled to him that I didn't want him to knock on my door again. He didn't react, just kept walking towards his house and went inside. I'd tolerated his weirdness for long enough. I convinced myself I wouldn't let him commentate my life schedule anymore and that next time he talks to me I was going to tell him I don't care and just keep walking. I closed the door and went straight back to bed, still frustrated with how intrusive and weird he was. I closed my eyes and imagined what I would say to him the next time I saw him. I felt really tired and had no problems getting back to sleep. As expected, I had the weirdest dream. Whenever I had a few drinks I'd always have such vivid dreams. I could hear that damn gentle knocking. I didn't jolt awake this time, I almost convinced my subconscious dream state to ignore the imaginary knocking. But I was fully aware of every creepy little thing that was happening. I started wondering if I'd locked the door. I knew I'd locked it earlier, but did I lock it after I opened it again to confront him? I couldn't remember. I hated how realistic my dreams were. Of all the scenarios I could think about, did I really have to imagine him breaking into my house and walking up my stairs? I feel like I'd never been so consciously aware during any of my dreams. I was dreaming that I was locked in place, sleeping on my side, with my back to the door. His breathing sounded so real. If it wasn't for the alcohol in my system, I would have definitely woken up. This was by far the creepiest dream I ever had. I dreamt that he was climbing into bed with me, wrapping his arm around my waist and playing with my hair. I felt absolutely disgusted, but the soft touches also felt relaxing and pushed me deeper into the dream. I was urging myself to wake up at this point. My mind kept racing back to the thought that I actually hadn't locked the door. I needed to get up. His breathing was so intense. It felt so real. His touch felt real. This was unlike any dream I'd ever had. I was urging myself to wake up. I felt paralyzed. Wake up. Wake the hell up. My eyes finally opened and I could still feel his touch. Why didn't you lock the door? I jumped up. His voice immediately jolted me awake. He was in my bed. I screamed and ran straight down the stairs and out into the night. I was still screaming as I ran across the road and started banging on my neighbor's door. I was freezing, only wearing my underwear and completely barefoot. I banged aggressively on her door and shouted her name until she came down. She opened the door in a daze and I pushed my way in. I frantically explained what had happened whilst begging her to lock the door and call the police. We watched out of the window, my front door was wide open, just as I'd left it. The cops were on their way and my friend was comforting me as I got into some of her clothes and told her all of the details. Minutes passed as we stared out of that window. My friend asked if I was sure he was there and it wasn't just a bad dream. I started to doubt myself when we didn't see him leaving. I wasn't the sensitive type, I wouldn't make up that whole scenario out of fear. I had a vivid memory of him lying in bed with me, and touching me, and talking to me. It was real. I know it was. The cops showed up after about 15 minutes and started to enter the house, guns drawn. We watched intently, waiting for them to bring him out in cuffs. They were in there for quite a while and I started to think that he'd locked himself in my room or something. After what felt like forever, the cops started to leave my house. They were alone. He wasn't with them. I couldn't believe it. I was not crazy. He was in my house. I know he was. I made my way outside to speak to the cops and ask where he was, but they confirmed that they found nothing and searched everywhere. I frantically told them that I was not going back into that house with him still in there. That's when the worst thing that could have happened, happened. He walked out of his house. He stood there, just watching. I was freaking out, demanding that they arrest him and insisting that he was in my house. His expression didn't change, he didn't even flinch. He just turned and walked back inside. Yes, I was drunk and I was pretty emotional at this point. But I couldn't believe that they didn't listen to me. They told me that they'd searched the entire place and there was no intruder. 
They said that the person who I claim was an intruder was clearly in their own home, so I should just go inside and get some sleep. There were no signs of forced entry and no damage or evidence of an intruder, so there was nothing they could do. After a while me practically begging them to at least go and interview him, one officer did go over and speak to him, but it seemed like a very short conversation. He confirmed that he did come over initially to check on me, as I looked drunk, but then went straight home. I was furious, but also terrified. I eventually went back inside and searched the house for any evidence that he was there. I was almost starting to doubt myself, until I checked the back door. It was unlocked, and the key was still in the door. I never left the key in the door, ever. He'd left through the back whilst I was hiding across the street. He'd been in my house and there was nothing I could do about it. I made my way upstairs after properly locking every door. The sick freak had made my bed. It was perfectly tidy and the covers and pillows were placed perfectly. He didn't even rush out after I woke up. He just tidied my bed and then left through the back door. I climbed in and tried to fall asleep, but there was an overwhelming musky smell. His unwashed body had tainted my covers and his odor lingered all over my room. It took me hours to replace all of my bedding and finally get to sleep. The next morning I couldn't shake the feeling of being violated, but I also doubted the whole night. The police had been inside my house, a bunch of men in heavy uniform. That could explain the smell. The key being in the back door, maybe they were checking to see if it was the right key for that lock, confirming that nobody had stolen it. Even the tiny pillows had an explanation. I told them he was in my bed. So it makes sense that they'd throw my bedding onto the floor if they were looking for him, and then maybe one of them just put it back and tidied it up for me. I followed my usual morning routine, and then at 8.30 as I approached my front door, I took a deep breath, anticipating his presence. I left my house and headed towards the road, looking in his direction as soon as I stepped outside. There he was. Walking out of his house to greet me. Like clockwork. I froze and tensed up, ready to scream or punch him if he got too close. You're running three minutes later than usual. Did you remember to lock your door this time? When I was 12, we had this neighbor, she was an elderly woman, but she was surprisingly active. We'd always see her around, carrying weeks worth of groceries up the hill like it was no big deal. She was outside doing her gardening almost every day. She was a tough old lady. The unfortunate thing was that she was the opposite of friendly. If you said hello to her, she'd tell you to run into the road. She hated people and was a very bad neighbor. She would complain about every little thing and show up late at night to tell you that you're too loud and threaten to call the cops. Our family got into quite a few arguments with her. Whenever she would come over to complain, she would aggressively insult all of us. My parents got sick of this and just started insulting her back, telling her she was old and miserable and she would die alone. I didn't like it, but I figured it was just adults letting off some steam. I'm sure I even caught her smiling on her way back home after shouting with my parents. She had quite a reputation around town for being a witch. There were all sorts of rumors about her being hundreds of years old and having the stamina and strength of a 20-year-old man. They were not wrong about that. People would say that they'd seen her performing rituals through her window and that she kidnapped children and ate them. It was all silly stuff, but at the time I found it fun to believe. Anyway, the real scary part happened when I was home alone playing on my Nintendo. I could hear an odd sound outside my window, like an animal scratching at a door. I paused my game and went to check it out. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. She was in our backyard, clawing at a window with a screwdriver, trying to get into the house. I opened the window and told her that I called the cops. She didn't hesitate to run back home. It was still so strange seeing this old woman running back at such speed. I actually did call the cops and told them what had happened. 
They told me they were on the way over and that I should go upstairs and lock myself in the bathroom. Within a few minutes I could smell something that made me panic. It was smoke. I immediately assumed she'd set the house on fire. I ran to open the bathroom window and that's when I realized what had happened. The smoke wasn't coming from my house. It was coming from next door. For whatever reason, her house had set on fire and she was still inside. Before the fire department could arrive, the whole place had gone up in flames. They announced that she died in that fire and we even went to her funeral. There weren't many people there. The last scary thing about all of this was that it only fueled the stories about her being a witch and that after I caught her trying to kidnap me, she had to burn it all down and move elsewhere to conceal her identity. I don't know what to believe, but I do enjoy telling this story every Halloween. My neighbor is very weird. He never waves and has a permanent sneer on his face. When we moved in we were told that he was on a certain bad list and that we should call the cops if we see him with kids. One day, he randomly knocked on our door. I'd never spoken to him before and without even introducing himself properly, he proceeds to launch into his explanation of the reason that he's on the registry. Basically, he claims that he accidentally hurt some kid in a locker room while they both happened to not be wearing any clothes. He says it was plain old vanilla assault where both parties just happened to be in their birthday suits. He repeated multiple times that he is absolutely not into children. Then he left without even letting me talk. That was literally my first introduction to him. Other than the notification about him when we first arrived. And that wasn't even the creepiest thing about him. At some point, he started building a sign in front of his house. Not like a little poster. It's professionally printed on metal and mounted on two huge posts, like the ones you see outside a store or along the highway. The sign is a picture of a puppy and a long rambling story about how someone ran over his dog on this road ten years ago. But it's written in a way where he seems to accuse the neighborhood of murdering his dog. Next to this sign, covering his entire fence, is an enormous banner saying, We miss you. I don't know why it says that, since he lives alone. And finally, an even larger picture of the puppy, which isn't necessary, because directly in front of the banner, sitting on a folding card table, is the actual puppy. He must have had the dog stuffed when it was ran over. I could see from my window that he would hide behind his fence for literally hours, peeking at the puppy on the table, as if he were waiting for someone to mess with it. He did this for days, until finally bringing the stuffed animal inside. The puppy and the banner disappeared, but the metal sign was permanent. It stayed up for years, until a storm ripped it down. I always wondered what he does with the dog. Did it stay in a closet, or does he keep it out in his house? Well, one day I got my answer. I have a friend who does construction, and funnily enough, he was hired by the creepy neighbor to build a shed. Without even asking, he tells me that the guy keeps an ugly stuffed puppy in the living room like a piece of furniture, and then he talks to it constantly. There were plenty of other creepy things, but the big puppy shrine was the most notable. I never did see him with any children, but I'm constantly on the lookout. I was just 14 years old, and it seemed like an ordinary night. It was roughly around 9 p.m., I was at my younger cousin's house and I was babysitting for the night. Both of our parents had gone out for drinks and weren't going to be back until late. We were just lounging around, sitting in the living room, watching random shows on television. So we're sitting there and I was feeling really unsettled. Something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I tried to ignore it and kept watching TV with my cousin, who was happily enjoying my company. The feeling wasn't going away. So I got up and walked to the back door to lock it. When I came back through the kitchen, 
I realized what was causing my weird feeling. In the window, there was a very decrepit and homeless looking man. Just staring into the window, looking at my young cousin. Protective mode turned on. I pretended like I didn't see the guy and I told my little cousin that we needed to go upstairs because our parents would be home soon and they wouldn't want him to be staying up late. I went upstairs and put him to bed, knowing damn well that there was a man outside that wanted to get in. At the time, I was about 125 pounds and 5 foot 8 and I played football for my school. If I remember correctly I went downstairs and straight into the kitchen and grabbed one of those meat tenderizing hammers. I turned back to the window where I saw him before. He wasn't there. So I ran back to the front door and checked that it was locked. Both the deadbolt and the knob were locked. I ran back upstairs with my meat tenderizer and went into my cousin's room and sat down in front of the door. He asked me what I was doing and I said that he didn't need to worry about it and that he should keep his head low. I called the cops and then my dad and uncle. Cops said they would take half an hour and my dad and uncle were 45 minutes away. All of a sudden I hear a window shatter and the sound of heavy boots walking around on the tiles. I told my cousin to stay calm and hide under the covers. I whispered to him that he needed to stay silent. I could hear the guy walking around downstairs, it was horrifying. I gripped that damn meat tenderizer and waited. About five minutes pass and then I hear the boots walking upstairs, at this point I was having a freaking heart attack. My cousin's door is no more than ten feet from the stairs. I heard him opening the doors to my uncle's room. Then the bathroom. My cousin's door was next along the hallway. I was shaking with adrenaline at this point. Suddenly, he decided to walk back downstairs and I heard him open the door to the basement. Fifteen minutes later the police showed up and burst into the house. They came up to our room and I told them that I heard him go into the basement. They rushed down there and caught the guy without much fuss. It turned out the guy was loose from a mental hospital from the city about twenty miles away. He had the mental age of a child and had broken into a few other houses in the area. I had nightmares for months afterwards. About ten years ago, I lived on my own and didn't have much company. I was quite depressed at the time after losing my girlfriend to a drunk driver. I was enjoying a beer and watching the sunset on the back porch when I saw a large, scruffy man emerging from the tree line. My heart skipped a beat as he stumbled towards my house in a menacing way. Living alone, I often used my backyard for target practice. And at that moment, I was immensely grateful for it. Instinctively, I rushed to bolt all the doors while frantically dialing the police. What I didn't know was that this intruder had broken in the day before through a basement window and had spent the night squatting there. He had left the basement door unlocked and at this point he made his way inside the house and was making his way up the stairs towards me. I gripped my rifle aiming at the approaching man as he descended the hallway. I shouted at him ordering him to stop and get on the ground but he just kept walking towards me. I fired the first round loaded with rock salt but he showed no reaction undeterred. I quickly followed with a rubber bullet to the chest. Yet the drugged up guy who was clearly out of his mind continued advancing. This guy was huge, at least twice my size, and I realized that whatever drugs he had in his body were going to push him through any pain that a rubber bullet would inflict. He was backing me into a corner. I desperately begged him to stop and warned him what would happen, but he just moaned at me like a zombie and lunged towards me. I took my third shot. I can't recall whether it was buckshot or a slug, but it left a gaping hole in his chest. It barely even slowed him down. He kept coming, and in a frenzied struggle, he wrestled me to the ground. He was moaning and coughing up blood. Suddenly, he grabbed my face with both of his massive hands and started squeezing my head. It was utterly terrifying. I could feel him trying to burst my skull open like a balloon. I don't know how long it actually lasted, but it felt like forever. 
Eventually, the injury finally caught up with him, and he died on top of me. I was laying with him crushing me for a few minutes. My energy was completely drained and I could barely breathe with his weight on top of me. His body was pushing my rifle into my chest and it was causing me serious pain when I tilt his body to the side. I was completely drenched in his blood and I can still remember the overwhelming smell. I'd completely forgotten that I was still on the phone with the operator who had heard our entire exchange which more or less amounted to me pleading, stop, or I'll shoot, and the man menacingly taunting. The police arrived soon after, and the incident made it to the local papers. There was a criminal investigation, but eventually, I was cleared of any wrongdoing. It turned out that the intruder was wanted for murder of an elderly couple in Baltimore and had somehow made his way 50 miles up the road into our rural area. I was 18 and chilling in my friend's apartment alone. We lived in a duplex. He was on the top floor and I was on the bottom. Ironically, I was watching a horror movie when I hear something huge come through the front door and into the kitchen. I got up to see who was there. We threw huge parties all the time, so it wasn't really that odd for some random to just show up. But then I saw this dude. He was a huge country boy wearing overalls and holding a huge butcher's knife, just looking at me while standing in the kitchen. I might have said something, I don't remember. But I promptly rushed out of a side door, ran into my apartment and locked all the doors. I don't remember who I called or exactly what happened, but I know I waited until I couldn't hear anyone moving around upstairs anymore and crept back in. Big guy was passed out on the couch. Turns out he was on parole for domestic abuse charges, had gotten super sauce downtown, and made it to the apartment where he used to live. He was arrested and we never heard from him again, so I assume his parole didn't go too well. I also have another story from that apartment, possibly related. Again, I was home alone and waiting for my friend to get back so we could play some Xbox. It's like 1am and suddenly there's aggressive banging on the door. As I mentioned, it wasn't unusual to have unexpected guests, but banging like this? Not normal. I get closer to the door and this guy is screaming about money and he kept referring to someone called Big Man. Open the door, Big Man. Big Man apparently owed him $10,000 and he was here to collect. He had something metal, I assumed it was a gun or a metal baseball bat. I could hear the clang noise when he'd smack the door. I was pretty high at the time and didn't know what to do, so I just stood on the other side of the door for about 20 minutes whilst he shouted abuse and tried to kick the door down. Pretty dumb, but I was young and stupid. He did eventually leave and I don't know if he came back one night during a party or what, but I never heard about him again. One final thing that happened in that apartment. It was the day after a party, my flatmate was once again out and it was just me at home. There was a knock at the door and I looked through and could see a delivery guy. I open the door and he says he's got a delivery for me, already paid for. He's just carrying a delivery bag that seems suspiciously light. He asks where's Jason and I ask who that is. He tells me Jason ordered it and says he can only deliver it to Jason because he paid for it. I didn't know anyone with that name and the guy didn't look like your typical delivery guy. I told him he must have the wrong address and this guy shoves his hand in the door and pushes it open whilst I'm trying to close it. We have this intense standoff where I'm trying to tell him that Jason doesn't live here and he insists that I let him in to check. He gives me this serious stare and tells me it's just Jason he needs to see. He decided to drop the delivery man act and it was clear that he and Jason had business. I was about to let him in to prove that Jason didn't live here when my flatmate came home and celebrated the fact that I'd ordered pizza. The guy dropped his bag and left. It took me a while to put all of the strange encounters together. The guy on parole who'd broken in originally was probably the guy that owed people money and had people showing up to get him to pay. We both moved out a few weeks later. That place was too much trouble. <laughs>